Hello, my name is Michael Barker. I'm a professor of civil and architectural engineering at the University of Wyoming. I'm also a co-director of the Bridge Technology Center as part of the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance. Today's video will be looking at standardized simple span bridge designs that are incorporated into an online design tool called eSpan 140. This video was developed for the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance under the Steel Market Development Institute, which is part of the American Iron and Steel Institute. The material presented in this video is for general information only, and it is not a substitute for competent professional advice. The objective of today's presentation is to provide bridge engineers and bridge owners with resources that are required to consider short span steel bridge solutions in design comparisons. An outline of the presentation will start with a problem statement, which really leads to the reason the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance was developed. And that was to develop standardized short span design standards that are incorporated in the online eSpan 140 tool. The video will finish with three example bridges that were designed by eSpan 140. The ASCE 2013 report card for America's infrastructure states that 25% of the nation's bridges are structurally deficient or functionally obsolete. If we look at bridge industry statistics, over 300,000 or a half of the bridges in the United States are less than 140 feet in length. This is what the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance considers as a short span bridge. Counties own over 200,000 of the 600,000 bridges in the United States, and most of these county bridges are 140 foot or less, and thus defined as short span. So it is clear that short span bridge replacement needs are great for the United States in the future. So when we think about owners replacing these bridges, there are several issues that are of significant concern. Certainly one is the economical aspects in terms of design, fabrication, and construction practices. Design of the replacement bridges is greatly helped by standardized designs and modular bridges. They are very helpful for preliminary design comparisons and of course for accelerated bridge construction. An aspect that is certainly important is durability of the bridge alternatives over the lifespan and of course life cycle costs and performance over the lifespan. And of course, sustainability is important in today's world in terms of using recycled content for the new bridge and also for reusable material at the end of the service life of that bridge. There are a couple other problems we will discuss here in this Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance video. One of them is the additional problem for economy. There is a preconception that concrete bridges are less expensive than steel bridges for short spans. However, studies show that steel is competitive for not only county bridges, but also state bridges. There are two references shown here in the video. One is for local bridges, where two Missouri county bridges were compared side by side to show that steel was competitive. The references for more information are shown on the video. At the state level, there was a significant historical life cycle cost study conducted for bridges in Pennsylvania that went into depth on initial costs, maintenance costs, and life cycle costs that show that steel and concrete bridges are competitive. So the preconception is out there that concrete bridges are less expensive, but when owners don't consider steel bridges and only consider concrete bridges for short spans, that may lead to expending more funds than necessary when replacing these short span bridges. An additional problem is a convenience problem. That if you had a 50 foot span, it would be fairly easy to find a concrete alternative with precast elements that would meet design standards. However, for steel bridges, each design is an original piece of work that requires effort and money. Therefore, if you had a 50 foot span that needed a bridge, it was easy to come up with a concrete design alternative, but it was difficult to come up with a steel design alternative. And so many owners would just simply go with the concrete design and ignore the steel design alternative. 
this was one of the main objectives of the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance to develop standardized simple span steel girder bridges. This is the first reference on this slide, eSpan 140 Short Span Steel Bridge Design. You can find it under www.eSpan140.com and it is the main topic of this video. The Alliance also developed a modular design system called the Press Break Tub Girder for modular applications and for accelerated bridge construction applications. With the standard designs, owners can now compare preliminary steel and concrete alternatives immediately with standard steel and modular steel designs for competitive economical analyses. So the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance was developed to deal with a couple of these additional problems. The program was started in 2007. The initial objective was to provide standard designs for economical simple span steel bridges up to 140 feet. It is the first North American industry-wide effort to provide education and design support for short span steel bridges. That includes the United States, Canada, and Mexico. The alliance is made up of stakeholders involved with steel bridge construction. This includes producers, fabricators, design firms, all the way through to contractors, service centers, coders, and fasteners, and it includes universities. The purpose is to provide economical steel solutions up to 140 feet. This graph shows the types of bridges that are considered. On the lower end, it includes corrugated pipe. Moving up goes to corrugated structural plate. Moving into wide flange girder bridges, up to plate girder bridges, and then for the longer spans, truss bridges. This video will be looking at the girder type bridges under E-Span 140. That includes wide flange and plate girder bridges. So the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance develops standard short span steel girder bridge designs. The goals are to create economically competitive designs but also to expedite and economize the design process itself using simple repetitive details and member sizes. The bridge parameters considered in the designs are span lengths between 20 and 140 feet in five foot increments, four different girder spacings at six feet, seven and a half, nine and 10 and a half feet, considering both limited depth and lightest weight rolled beam sections, homogeneous and hybrid plate girders with limited plate sizes, Selective cross-frame placement design according to AASHTO NSBA collaboration documents to supply a composite deck and shear stud design and to use elastomeric bearing designs. There are four types of girder designs in E-Span 140. The lightest weight rolled beams would represent the minimum amount of material used for a rolled beam bridge. However, because of approach work or clearance requirements, owners may want to consider limited depth rolled beams, so that solution is also included. For plate girders, it considers both homogeneous plate girders and hybrid plate girders where HPS 70 KSI material is placed in the critical flanges. In addition, for whatever type of girder bridge desired, the girders were designed to accommodate commonly stockpiled plate thicknesses and rolled beam sizes for economies. The bridges in E-Span 140 were designed according to current AASHTO LRFD specifications. This includes the Strength 1, Service 2, Fatigue, Constructability, and Deflection limits within the specification. A full HL93 vehicular live loading is considered. The additional dead loads considered in the designs are showing on the lower part of this slide, where stay-in-place forms are considered a future wearing surface, significant concrete barriers, some miscellaneous steel for the stiffeners and diaphragms, the concrete strength, a haunch of two inches. For the plate girders, a constant flange width was used with a constant web height. The standard designs were incorporated in E-Span 140, which is the online design tool for short span steel bridges. It was developed under the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance and it has its own website at eSpan140.com. It can also be found through the shortspansteelbridges.org website. eSpan 140 provides economical steel solutions up to 140 feet. This presentation will be examining the road shape and plate girder design alternatives. ESPAN 140 is an easy to use and free resource for bridge engineers and owners. 
It is fairly easy to run with three simple steps. The first step is to create a user's account, giving the information of who is running the program. Step two would be putting in your project details. And then step three is viewing your customized solution book. Once registered, you can start a new project by hitting the Start New Project to begin. ESPAN 140 will give solutions if there are solutions with the available range. So for instance, if you had a 100 foot span, ESPAN 140 would give solutions for a rolled beam girder bridge, a homogeneous plate girder bridge, and a hybrid plate girder bridge. The next part of ESPAN 140 is to define the bridge. It's pretty much the same as we would do for a concrete bridge, where we're looking at the length of the bridge, the width of the bridge, and the number of lanes. There are some more details to that, but that's the basic information. So we start by putting in, of course, naming the bridge, but then putting in the span length of the bridge, putting in the number of lanes, the roadway width, some parapet information, and some overhang information. If there are sidewalks, those can be added with the widths of the sidewalks. And then the skew and the average daily traffic for fatigue considerations. And at this point, ESPAN 140 produces solutions. A customized solution book is provided. It is in a PDF format, and it includes several items. The first is the standard designs and details for the short span steel bridge solutions for the inputs that were entered. This will include rolled beam recommendations and plate girder recommendations. There are also standard design and details for corrugated steel pipe and structural plate solutions that are not discussed in this video. But there are also manufacturer steel solutions from partners within the short span steel bridge alliance where they supply the owner or designer with alternatives that meet their bridge needs. Also included in the solutions book is durability solutions from partners within the Alliance that give information on galvanizing, painting, and weathering steel. At the end of the solutions book is a list of additional contact information from Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance members that can be contacted if the owner or designer has questions. This slide gives an example of the first page of the Steel Bridge Solutions. The second page includes a table of contents on what is included within the solutions packet. Included in the solutions packet is a review of the project input details. The following slides show an example of the design details that are included within the solutions packet. This slide shows the sample plate girder elevation view for a homogeneous plate girder. It shows the details for stud placements, bearing stiffeners, transfer stiffeners, and lengths. The solutions packet also gives a table that shows the flange sizes and the weights and the cambers of the girder design. Here's the example rolled beam, lightest weight, elevation view. Again, the details are given for the design. And it's also shown in a table, as it was for the plate girder. This table shows the background for the standard designs within ESPAN 140 for the lightest weight rolled shape design. For instance, if you had a 70 foot design and a 6 foot spacing, a W33 by 130 would work. If you go up to a 9 foot spacing, it would go up to a W40 by 149. However, if for any 70 foot spacing, a W40 by 167 would work. The solution shows a typical girder elevation for a plate girder design where it calls out where the shear stiffeners are located, the bearing stiffeners, and any kind of flange splice requirements. Also part of the solution are typical stiffener details where practical and economical stiffener details are used. Practical and economical diaphragms are also used for these simple span bridges and simple connections to the connection plates. The concrete deck details are given for the required reinforcement and also the shear stud placement. And ESPAN 140 supplies the design for the elastomeric bearings. Also included in an ESPAN 140 solutions packet is information on corrugated steel pipe and structural plate standards, but that is not covered within this video. 
Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance members also have the opportunity to supply manufacturer solutions within the solution packet. Many counties have found this useful in that they can contact the manufacturers to consider their solutions for their bridge projects. Eastman 140 also supplies durability solutions with information on weathering steel applications, galvanizing steel, and painted steel. Eastman 140 is supported by the Bridge Technology Center, which is a group of three universities, the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance members, and the National Corrugated Steel Pipe Association that will address users' questions on the use of Eastman 140. Finally, we will look at three Eastman 140 design bridges. The first bridge we'll look at is actually the first direct application of Eastman 140 from start to finish. Jessup South Bridge in Buchanan County, Iowa was designed by Eastman 140 and it was built by a county crew. The existing bridge was replaced using W36 by 135 rolled beams. The county crew had built several bridges before, but never one of this size. The county crew has built several concrete bridges in the past, but had never built a steel bridge before. This was also the longest bridge they had ever built. It was the first concrete deck that they had placed. It was the first integral abutment that they had built. They used galvanized steel. They also used galvanized rebar, and they built this bridge with county equipment. Two other Eastman 140 design bridges will be looked at within this presentation. The first one is a county bridge, a locally owned county bridge in Boone County, Missouri. It's called the High Point Lane Bridge. It's a 102 foot long, two lane rural road plate girder bridge. It used 44 inch weathering steel plate girders designed by Eastman 140. The reason this one was important was because initially they were planning to build this bridge out of concrete because they had the preconception that concrete bridges were less expensive in the short span range. However, a fabricator that is part of the alliance talked to the owners and convinced them to consider steel bridges using an East Span 140 design. And the two bridges, the concrete bridge and the steel bridge, went out to bid and the steel bridge won the contract. The other bridge is a state bridge in Kansas in Shawnee County where it's a 112 foot long five plate girder bridge. It was also a competitive bid process where the steel bridge was designed using Eastman 140 and competed against the concrete bridge. And the steel bridge won the competition and the bridge was constructed in the summer of 2014. Here are three examples, the first bridge ever designed and built with Eastman 140, but then these other two where one was a local bridge and one was a state bridge, where both bridges competed against concrete and both bridges won the contract. So to summarize this video, there are three points to be made. That Eastman allows the owner or designer to determine a preliminary simple span steel girder bridge design in a matter of minutes. Then the owner can set that design next to a concrete design and let the market decide which bridge is going to be built. Previously, this was difficult to do because there was not a standard steel bridge design to lay next to the standard concrete design. Eastman 140 incorporates common rolled shapes or uses common plate sizes for girders that improves availability and improves on economy. And the third one is that practical and economical design details are used for ease of fabrication, erection, and cost. And what this results in is that cost comparisons between concrete and steel alternatives is now much easier for more competition and better use of bridge funds. For more information on Eastman 140 or more information on the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance, the director of the Alliance is Rich Tavaletti, and he is in the Steel Market Development Institute under AISI. His contact information is given here. What I encourage you to do is to visit the shortspansteelbridges.org website where there is much information on shortspan steel bridges and also to just try Eastman 140 under eastman140.com and give it a run to see how it can help you in your consideration of steel for short span bridges. Thank you very much.